So Melania Trump has finally spoken out and broken her silence about what happened at the Capitol at the hands of her husband and his supporters last week. But in her official statement, she above all is the victim. She has made herself the victim of what her husband and his supporters did to democracy less than a week ago. That's what she did. I'm going to read you the key paragraph from that statement. Now, in the statement, she also remembers the victims. And of course, she says she can, you know, doesn't condone and, uh, and actually condemns the events. But this is the key paragraph where she says, I am disappointed and disheartened with what happened last week. I find it shameful that surrounding these tragic events, there has been salacious gossip, unwarranted personal attacks and false misleading accusations against me from people who are looking to be relevant and have an agenda. So she's the victim here, not democracy, not the actual symbolic institutions of the government, not the people that lost their lives or were injured. They are not the victims. Melania Trump is the victim because some people said some things that she thought was mean on the internet or in magazines or whatever, or on CNN or whatever. And that's the real story here. Melania's feelings. People lost their lives, Melania. Democracy was shaken, Melania. Your husband ordered all of it, Melania. That's the story here. That's the story. Like, I mean, if you're going to say this stuff, one, you're ridiculous regardless, but to put this in your, you know, official statement is, is infuriating. And it wasn't only this in the statement. She lists the names of the fallen officer next to some of the, the, the people that stormed the building. Like she, she uh, essentializes them and sort of gives them equal weight, which is never done when we talk about other forms of protest. When we have other situations where there's a police officer that's fallen and, you know, a perpetrator that's fallen, often the perpetrator is not included in the same remembrance as the officer, right? Whether you agree with that philosophy or not, right? You can have a debate because in, in a very human sense, all lives are equal, but like, you know, politically officers lives are often given more weight. She's really making a statement here that she sees the people that entered the building on her husband's egging to be equal in moral action and weight to the officer. That's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty concerning. I would say it's sort of a tacit, you know, acknowledgement, a quiet acknowledgement to the people that went in that they did the right thing, or at least they didn't do the wrong thing even as she's condemning, you know, the, the violent actions and things like that. Further, it may well be the case that she plagiarized part of this statement, not from anybody else, but from herself at a recent speech. Now you might say, okay, that's not as bad as when she pilfered her speech from, you know, Michelle Obama a few years ago at the 2016 RNC, but it does show that maybe she sort of did this on autopilot, that either she or her assistants or somebody in the White House communications team was like, yeah, we'll throw something together, I guess, five or six days late, four or five days late. It's going to be full of typos. We don't actually have anything good to add. So we're just going to throw in some inspirational Melania quotes, I guess, jam it together and send it off to the media, you know, as this broken down whining victimhood mess that she sort of created for herself. That's what it looks like. But beyond all this, because we can make fun of Melania's letter and we can say that she's a bit of a whiny baby, but ultimately, you know, she's not the president and she doesn't hold the same kind of political office. So generally, it's good to lay off someone like that. But here she failed to hold her own husband to account at that crucial moment. We have reports that on that day, Melania was doing a photo shoot. Now, it was pre-planned, and she can't control what happened at the Capitol, but during that day, she was doing a photo shoot when all of this was going down, when all of these horrific events were going down, and she continued with her photo shoot. She didn't stop her photo shoot because of this crazy thing happening, and she realized that maybe this isn't the best day to take fancy pictures, but she didn't even try to talk to her husband about maybe acting upon this. Here's a quote from a recent source. CNN has also reported on this. It says here, staffers begged Melania to intercede with Trump during the, during the, the events. She refused and continued her photo shoot. This is a lady that even in private won't even talk to her husband 
to maybe give him a sober second thought. So if she really condemned these actions, if she really thought they were awful, she would have been in her husband's ear, canceling her photo shoot to demand within every sort of personal power she had with him to stop that madness. And she didn't. I don't want to see anybody so show any sympathy for Melania Trump here. At the very best, she should be ignored. But frankly, we have a lady here that stood by while the, 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 the Congress was being sieged as her husband did it and laughed about it and was loving seeing it. And she stood by and basically condoned the whole things. And then a few days later, she puts out a letter where she's the victim. Everyone's the same at that event. And it's basically pilfered from a previous speech. This shows that Melania really doesn't give a damn about anybody but herself.